move that thing out of my way when I get up. Okay. Yeah, later okay. on. You know. Okay, we're we're here. We're here. We're on the air. No more uh, layman's layman's comments. We have we have our professional caps on. Even though I am cap, I am capless. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Progressive Discussions. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life Twenty One, and I am here uh -huh. with my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in nineteen seventy-seven. <laughs> the one and only. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, how are you feeling uh, this week, sir? Cold. Last night or yesterday, because of the wind chill factor, mm. you know that you know you, you you remember the song, "The Winds of November Come Early." Edmund Fitzgerald mm. was that Gordon Lightfoot? Mm -hmm. Well, they certainly do, mm. and it has been frigid. It has been at night in the uh, in the twenties. Oh. What was it last night? Oh, it was 20-something. It was 20-something. Yeah. Please excuse the meowing in the background. That's the witch's familiar. The black and white Felix-looking cat named Steve, who Beelzebub is working through to try to unprofessionalize our show. For some miraculous reason, he doesn't stink to high heavens anymore. Anyway, we're drinking y Yenling... Porter. Porter. Hey, Porter. Yinling Porter. <laughs> Yinling Brewery. America's oldest brewery. 1829, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. And Porter is like mm. stout, except it is made from malted barley as opposed to roasted barley. Ooh. And there is the beautiful red label. Yinling Porter. Yinling Porter, America's oldest brewery. Let me take my first sip. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Gold too, man. Well, go fuck yourself. Now Steve is right by me to bust my boy. You see how you see how the witches familiars are? <clears throat> they they know how to push your buttons. He wants to be on the show. Alright. <coughs> maybe, maybe his flopping tail will end up on, on the camera. In Technicolor. Everything we discuss politically on this show is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Hmm. There's the conch, soaking that conch energy from the hmm. briny deep. Yes, King Neptune, the cat is very annoying, but he's black and white, you know, so um, hmm. I forgive him. You know, black and white cats are popular in, in, the, in the cartoon world. They always have been. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have quite a monologue. I brought the notebook this time because I put it out the night before. Hmm. Yes, yes, sir. Bye. <laughs> okay. Seven lucky bells for this week's progressive discussions, and we definitely need it. I say that every week. And, hmm. and here we go. Well, um, I just want to say congratulations uh, to uh, the uh, nationwide Democrat uh, local victories this past, uh, 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 last Tuesday actually, right? Yeah. Or this past Tuesday, I'm sorry. Yep. Last Tuesday. Um, one down and two to go. Next November of 2018 is an extremely important election because the uh, many seats in Washington for the House of Representatives and the Senate are up for election, re-election, because you have some old mummies in there, some old sarcophagus in there that keep on getting reelected, like you know, forever, mm -hmm. and um, and now th then, when that time comes, it will be an opportunity for Americans to clean out the barn. 
<laughs> because if you clean out the barn, the one gigantic turd that will still be in the barn in Washington, D.C., won't be able to do much if the Democrats take back control of the House and the Senate. But he, he said he was there to, to get rid of the swamp. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but he, he is the swamp. I know, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 knew, I, knew, I knew his campaign promises were never going to be kept when he chose that e zealot, evangelical, religious freak Mike Pence as his um, running mate, uh, vice presidential running mate. Hmm. Mike Pence is like, like Rick Santorum. He's 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 a Republican that will either enslave or kill off the poor. Plus, he's a religious nut. All right, yeah, like Ray Moore. Yeah, you know the old uh, Ten Commandment uh, guy who's the uh, caught the uh, fooling around with young chickies. Oh, like like when Jimmy Swaggart said, "Lust is bad. <laughs> lust is bad." He caught tears were going down his face. Oh, lust, lust. And meanwhile, he was he was pulling a, a looketh over there Republican uh, uh, old trick distraction. He's talking. He was talking against the very thing that Jimmy one. Swaggart was guilty of. Yeah. Pick, picking up hookers on on the, on the side of the highway, whatever he was doing. You know, they do that the right wing. They That's distract right. you. That's right. Like um, Bernie Sanders told off Donald Trump on Twitter. I mentioned it last week about all the, the, the bad things he's doing. And then at the end, Bernie Sanders says, do your job. Right away, Donald Trump has to bring up the DNC, Hillary Clinton, and, and Barbara Bobo Brazil. <laughs> you know, the book, right? Which is a distraction. Okay, that's that's the DNC. <coughs> that was the 2016 <laughs> campaign. Mm -hmm. Bernie's not talking about that. Bernie's talking about what, you, what have you done in the Sweet. first year of being president of the United States. It amounts to nothing. Which the anniversary happened recently, his first year, I think. No, uh, no, it's eight or nine months. Well, his election, okay. Yeah. So it's like, yes, congratulations. Uh, we have a uh, Bill Murphy defeated the, uh, the, the witch, the Republican witch. Uh, uh, what the fuck was her name? Kim. G Kim G Guadano. Guadamo. Uh, guacamole, gua, uh, Guadamo, uh, Balloon Boys, of uh, uh, Buddy, Chris Christie, oh, the yeah. big balloon will be floating away very soon. So, congratulations to Phil Murphy, and congratulations to Phil Murphy's uh, first plan of attack or one of his first plans of, at of attack is to legalize recreational marijuana <laughs> along with medical marijuana, of course, mm -hmm. in the state of New Jersey. Smart move. It shows that he is... He's got some progressive blood in him, Phil Murphy. He, he, you got to be a progressive to want to legalize recreational marijuana as well as medical marijuana. Now, I hope this marijuana is not going to be the patented, genetically modified Monsanto marijuana, but nevertheless, whatever it is, <clears throat> it's a progressive move on the part of Phil Murphy, and congratulations to your victory. And um, in New Jersey, hold on, that's the furnace. In New Jersey, the barn in Trenton has been cleaned out. So, uh, you know, even though some some uh, f friends of mine on my Facebook friends list stated that Phil Murphy, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, cra he, he's got some crazy ideas. But of course, they live in red states. You see, there's something about these people. Even if they're highly intelligent, even if they have a lot of common sense, there's something about people who grew up 
in red states uh, with a with a sort of an evangelical Protestant religion background that they seem to be brainwashed and they seem to not have the ability to uh, take a hard look at their political and religious views and, and, and say, you know what? I've been hoodwinked all these years since I was a kid, since I was a child. But they're very smart in all other ways. But there are many people who are easy to brainwash, not progressives who are um, independent, critical, free thinkers with an open mind like myself, uh, Dr. Bill, and a few others out there, um, you know, um, who are real progressive warriors. Now, there's not a lot of them, but they're out there. Uh, they're able to analyze everything, dissect everything, and realize what is a lie, what is not a lie. Like, for instance, trickle-down economics was always been a big lie. <laughs> but these, these people, I don't want to call them Joe Six Packs. Some of them are brain cell deficient, inbred, you know, uh, rednecks. Some of them that live in the South and out West are intelligent, nice, uh, normal, common sense people. But they're still brainwashed. So there's something that allows them to be brainwashed. I think they let other people do their thinking for them. Yeah, like for instance, uh, listening to some evangelist or uh, there you go. or or their local pastor. Well, my local pastor said this and that, or my favorite evangelist out here in uh, you know in Louisiana said well, that and this. Well, you know, when the thing came up with Ray Moore about the young kids, uh, you know, that he's a predator pre preying on. Yeah. Well, some uh, re a religious right uh, nut comes up and says, well, uh, Mary was a very young child when Joseph uh, took her in and she had Jesus. Well, uh, she wasn't begotten from Joseph. But she was a virgin. When she Joseph when, didn't dick her that it was, until later. It was not. It, it was the immaculate conception right. at first, and after Jesus was born, because that was the plan. Uh, then Joseph uh, had, uh, had uh, other a, kids. Free, a free yeah. for all yeah. with Mary. Yeah, and he had brothers and sisters. Right. You know. You know, and then Joseph, who was a carpenter, uh, trained Jesus to. Uh, become a chip off the old block, no pun intended, and uh, taught him carpentry. So the concept of a an emaciated, starving Hollywood Jesus with all the ribs sticking out, or a, or a Roman Catholic Jesus who was emaciated, I haven't seen any carpenters that are like emaciated. Yeah. They're all physically fit looking guys. You know, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions. Oh, well. You know, um, they just tried. They just tried to make it that it was okay for him to go after 14 and 15 and 16 year old girls. Well, the, the right wing will come up with any stupid rationalization. Or yeah, or their their big thing is they do. if they do something wrong. Well, the Democrats did it too. Like what Donald Trump did. Well, look at the DNC, Bob, Barbara Brazil's book, collusion, collusion. Okay, what does that have to do with, you know, you? In other Ooh, words, God. yes, yes, no, no one should be above the law. Not even the DNC <laughs> or anybody in it who works for it. No one should be above the law. I would love to see everyone who's guilty be brought to justice, hey. regardless of political party. Yeah. You know. Um, okay, uh, uh, I want to do real quick, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you, the borough or town for you numbskulls out there, of Garfield, New Jersey. Shame on you, you're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. A homeowner, a so-called homeowner, was fined $250 without warning, the 
which I thought was pretty low. Without warning, just for putting his garbage out before 6 p.m. and disobeying this new ordinance. Now, it seems like politics uh, on all levels have politicians have become racketeers. Uh, any petty reason to uh, to steal yeah. from the citizens of the United States seems to be okay, seems to be permissible. I mean, uh, when, I, when I said so-called homeowner, are you really a homeowner in the United States? You have to abide by all these frivolous ordinances. You have to get permission to have a yard sale now. You have to get a permit to have a garage sale on your own property. You cannot plant vegetables and, and herbs in front of your house, only in the back of your house. You cannot have a stockade fence higher than what the town tells you. You cannot collect rainwater on your own property, quote unquote. You cannot have a hen house and raise your own chicken eggs. You cannot do diddly dick on your own property. So this bullshit, this right-wing flag-waving bullshit of the American dream of owning your own home is nothing but a bunch of hogwash, Dr. Bill. Oh, it's all poppycock, boulder dash, whatever you want to call it. You do not really own your own home. Well, because they can tell you what to do. Back in the day when people lived on family-owned farms, that was a different story. Um, you know, well, before the Industrial Revolution. I watched a program on cable called the American Pickers. Yes. You always bring them up every week. Well, because, you know, you watch these and you... And well, they, 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 they hoodwink uh, lonely widows and widowers. No, 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 no. They're very fair with their prices. They give them fair prices? Oh, yeah. yeah. But what is happening is you'll see these people in these rural states who own a lot of land. They've accumulated a lot of land Acreage, yes. in their time, and it, 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 it may look like a junkyard, one or two of them. Well, you never know what they have. He, well, but the point of it is the county now comes after them to clean it up. Oh, that's another ordinance. If your grass is too high, you get a warning on your front door here in Bergen County, New Jersey. Hey, maybe you don't feel like cutting your grass for a couple of weeks. It's your house, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. All right. So, so there these you things go. happen. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's bullshit. Own your own home. You have, a, you have to get a thousand and one permits for everything. you got to uh, abide by all these ordinances. And frivolous ones, too. $250. And then, for before 6 p.m. Are you serious, Garfield, New Jersey? And then, if they want your house for something, eminent domain, the government they can take it. The government can seize it. That's correct. Uh, so, in other words, you really do not own exactly. your own home. So, exactly. you forget about that right-wing flag, Yankee Doodle Dandy, flag-waving, you know, American dream bullshit. Yeah. Forget about it. So, uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Um, Nancy Pelosi on CNN recently, I listened to the uh, inter interview, Nancy Pelosi on CNN will not criticize the DNC or Hillary Clinton based on Donna Brazile's new book. Plus, she avoided agreeing with Elizabeth Warren on the 2016 DNC being rigged. The, uh, the the Democratic primary is being rigged. She she didn't want to comment. This sellout suck up wants a bipartisan compromise on the new tax code. Mm. Nancy Pelosi, you are no progressive warrior. What a suck up kiss ass she always was. And uh, I read an article where Nancy Pelosi is suing. The, the hospital that performed a surgery on her husband because her husband has lost interest in sex with her. Ah. But the hospital spokesperson says, 
her husband had cataracts removed. So that means he got a good look good at look her. Good look at her. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, hold on. Where's the levity bells? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's this is true. Now the woman, the uh, woman is is a sellout, suck up corporatist Democrat. There's no doubt about that. No comment. Everything is no comment. No comment. Elizabeth Warren has the gumption and courage to say yes. I believe the two, 2016 Democratic primaries were rigged, mm -hmm. and uh, she don't want to comment. Nancy Pelosi does not want to uh, comment mm -hmm. and agree or. On Donna Brazil and Elizabeth Warren, and um, now that the furnace has stopped, the witch is familiar. Steve starts to meow again. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, she's a suck up. So that's about it, unless I think of something that I did not mention. Uh, we have a, a, several more minutes. Let us sink our teeth into at least one reading before we have to pause because we got to pause on the 29 we definitely have to break on the 29 minute mark mm -hmm. and, I'll, and i'll enjoy my yinling porter all right all right speaking of uh, ray moore uh-huh senate republicans said on thursday that gop Senate candidate Roy Moore should drop out of the Alabama special election if sexual misconduct allegations against him are true. Okay. If these allegations are true, he must step aside, said Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of uh, Kentucky. The, uh, talk about the uh, old, old right-wing sarcophagus that doesn't want to leave. Ugly old turtle ha face, McConnell. Establishing a line that was repeated by an array of Senate colleagues. Yeah. In a Washington Post story published on Thursday, several women said Moore groped, groped, kissed, or otherwise pursued them when they were teenagers and he was in his 30s. Notice this is a trend among um, conservatives. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, grab them by the pussy, grab them by the ass, you know, and uh, no pun intended, pussy, and then the, the, the son of a bitch meows. The women who spoke on the record of the, to the Post said that Moore asked them out on dates while serving as an assistant district attorney in Gadsden, Alabama. Well, I got news for the feminists out there. There's nothing wrong with asking someone out on a date or complimenting them in a in a in an appropriate way. I know the male hating uh, neoliberal feminists don't like men to try to meet a woman. One woman, Lee Korfman, said she was only 14. Oh, gee, she's a minor. When more than 32 undressed her. Oh, yikes. Groped her. Oh, jeez. And had her touch him. You mean his schlong? Oh. Though okay. they did not have intercourse. Oh, so if they're, if they're going to use Bill Clinton's analogy, they did not have sex. No sales. relationship. <laughs> Blow job and no relationship. <laughs> does the law really look at it that way? The law does not. No, that's sodomy. <laughs> you know, and that, that could be. Well, you're anything. you're 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 still having sexual contact with a minor. Yeah. You know. The story quotes two other women, who said that Moore took them on dates when they were sixteen and seventeen. Still minors. And a third who said Moore bought her wine uh, uh, uh. when she was eighteen. Well, that ain't, that's not so bad. Below the state's legal drinking Im 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 uh, age at yeah, the time. Yeah, you know, only the United States has this uh, 
prohibition uh, attitude towards alcoholic beverages. There's there's a there's a a, a real entertaining reality show mm -mm. on I believe the I think it's the Discovery Channel called Moonshiners, and you know the ABC cops are always out there looking for the, the still the stills that are hidden in the, in the forest. You know what I mean? So what? People have been fermenting alcoholic beverages for thousands of years and now these friggin evangelical mm -hmm. religious freaks w make it illegal to make your own booze well i think it was new york state new york state just made smoking illegal until you're 21 unless they want unless the unless the politicians in those in those redneck <laughs> states are looking for a permit fees to, to run a distillery, maybe they're looking for money. Maybe you gotta you have to get a license and uh, all, you know a whole bunch of stuff. Probably to make your own booze. So when the little guy wants to make homemade moonshine, they want to um, call it a uh, either a misdemeanor or a felony, depending on. Yeah, well, that's the pro That's one of the problems with licensing. Well, if you sell it, it's a felony, I think. You know what I mean? That's one of the problems with licensing. Licensing permits, yeah. Yeah. More. A former state Supreme Court chief justice is running against Democrat Doug Jones, a former U.S. attorney in a December 12 special election for the Senate seat of Jeff Sessions, which he gave up to become President Donald Trump's Attorney General. Okay. Moore vehemently denied the charges, calling it fake news. <laughs> His campaign called the allegations completely false. This garbage is the very definition of fake news and intentional defamation. The campaign statement said, Judge Roy Moore has endured the most outlandish attacks on any candidate in the modern political arena. But this story in today's Washington Post, alleging sexual impropriety, takes the cake. The statement noted that Moore has been married to the same woman for 33 years and has four children and five grandchildren. Moore beat Senator Luther Strange, who was appointed to fill the seat after Sessions' departure in a Republican primary in September, even though Trump supported Strange. Moore was in Washington last week, where he spoke briefly to Republican senators at their weekly policy lunch in the U.S. Capitol. He has railed publicly against Republican leaders, including McConnell, and McConnell had endorsed Strange in the Republican primary. Several senators, including Richard Shelby, the senior senator from Alabama said last week they supported Moore's bid. But the tone changed on Thursday afternoon. If these allegations are true, there is no place for Roy Moore in the United States Senate, shall be said. Strange did not respond to questions from reporters on Thursday. The allegations against Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore are deeply troubling. Colorado Senator Cory Gardner, chairman of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, said, if these allegations are found to be true, Roy Moore must drop out of the Alabama Special Senate election. Yeah, we got a pause. It was very troubling. Just stare at where you're <clears throat> where you left off. Okay. 
I'll make I continue where you left off. Now? Yeah, no, yeah, hold on. Continue where you left off. It was troubling. If what we read is true and people are on the record, so I assume it is, then he should step aside. Moore's name cannot be removed from the ballot before the December 12 special election, even if he withdraws from the race. John Bennett, a spokesman for the Alabama Secretary of State, told the Associated Press, a write-in campaign remains possible. Okay, that ends that article on Mr. Moore. Uh, my physical attraction to my boyfriend has significantly diminished due to his baldness. How bald was he when they met? I know this may seem shallow, but I have lost all interest in intimate contact with him. His head on my shoulder, it literally makes my stomach large. Well, uh, was he balding when they started dating, uh, number one? Uh, number two, maybe he should visit that uh, hair club for men. Oh, that looks beautiful on TV. Remember when George Costanza got a wig and Elaine and Seinfeld and Elaine Bennis uh, had a problem with it? Well, he got all cocky and everything. Anyway. Our romance began 20 years ago. Oh, so he probably had a full head of hair. When he still had hair. <laughs> it fell out two years ago. Oh, really? Maybe he should see a good uh, dermatologist and, you know, get his hormones checked or something, you know? I still have feelings for him, but I don't know how to get past this. I have tried turning out the lights and even imagining I'm with somebody else. Oh, jeez, it's gotten that bad, huh? I'm sure other women feel the same way I do. He tries to conceal his baldness by doing the flip over. What about these guys who were uh, sex symbols, celebrity sex symbols who shaved their head? and had like a little beard going, all right? And women loved them. Oh, I, I, let, I, let me correct myself. They were rich celebrities. <laughs> Need I say more? But I am so turned off. Okay. Can you give me some advice? <laughs> I haven't said anything because I don't want to offend him. I wish you will. I am upset and discouraged and no longer look forward to seeing him because of this. Oh, she's very shallow. She's really uh, overdoing it. It wouldn't be an awful reason to leave him, yet I can't stand looking at his head. Okay. <laughs> she can't stand looking at his head. Answer. The wick. Ask yourself whether you are turned off by your boyfriend's baldness or whether it's his attempt to hide it with the unconvincing comb over. If it's the latter, comb over, the solution might be for him to go the way of Dwayne, The Rock Johnson, or Vin Diesel, Buzz it. and shave his head. Shave your head, grow a goatee, and let it end there. However, if you truly can't handle the fact that his locks have flown, then do him and yourself a favor and turn him loose so he can find a lady who appreciates him for what's going on under his scalp rather than over it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Yul Brenner, Telly Savalas, uh, that guy that played with Robert uh, Urich, Ur Hawk. Oh, so black guy. That was uh, Spencer for hire. Yeah, Hawk also played in uh, space, uh, 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 Star Trek, uh, space. Uh, uh, oh, he did. Yeah. 
what the hell was the name of that title? Oh, there's a new Star Trek series, by the way. Yeah, I know, Discovery. I haven't seen it yet. A oh, wait a minute. Aging and the consequences it brings happens to women as well as men. Keep that in mind. Some as you women. consider yeah. jumping back into the dating pool. Some women uh, lose hair, you know. Uh, yeah. Usually an overabundance of testosterone uh, be, uh, above and beyond the norm uh, will cause uh, hair on the head to fall out. But then again, the body hair will come out stronger, you know. Uh, whereas estrogen has a lot, of, a lot to do with the, the hair on your head. Um, uh, homeopathic silicea by my favorite company, Highlands Homeopathics, is very good for hair growth and nail growth. Uh, yeah, yeah. Usually what's good for the hair is good for the nails. I mean, for, for women. For men too, but I'm saying, women care about strong, thick nails yeah. and lustrous, thick hair. Yeah. But it, it works on men too, Cilicia. I, I, I knew, I had a, um, where I used to work many years ago, an assistant manager, a, a black guy, uh, uh, was trying to grow an afro, and it wouldn't grow. What? For months and months and months, it just, it just went so far, and that's it. Not, not even to the point of an afro. He started taking the Highlands homeopathic silicea, and lo and behold, it started growing like weeds. So it works on a man, and uh, silicea is made is made from uh, silicon. silica, silicon horsetail herb. Horsetail herb is the, uh, the common uh, source. I think horsetail is one of the herbs used for a. Uh, uh, yeah, there's another illness. A bladder. Yeah. I had bladder problems, like, uh, you know, nervous bladder, stuff like that. Yeah. Not not urinary tract infections, but a, Dude. but a, a, you mean people who have an incontinence problem? Um, that is the not, urge. that is not infection related. Or yeah. Incontinence, that's when you go from North America to South America? Ah. Incontinence? <laughs> fucking furnace has been kicking on a lot lately. Hey, it's only 30 something out there. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. That's why it's kicking on. Yeah. All right, we, we got time. After casting his last ballot as governor in Mendham Township on Tuesday, Governor Chris Christie engaged in a testy exchange with a voter. Good, well, maybe one last testy exchange for uh, uh, Krispy Kreme Crisco Christie. Over what she said was his failure to merge the township with the neighboring Menham Borough. Oh, that's trivial. That's trivial. What about uh, 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 New Jersey's rich uh, being on a tax vacation? What about defunding Planned Parenthood? What about eliminating Section 8 rent subsidy? What about his stupid law about food stamps, where if you pay room and board and you don't pay utilities, you get your food stamps severely cut. Uh -huh. Instead, she's worried about merging two boroughs. What a stupid fuck. You know, my state has so many assholes that, you know, a proctologist would need like... Dr. Dupa. He would need like a whole hospital full of proctologists, uh -huh. you know. That's how many assholes are in my state. A stupid motherfucker. During an informal exchange with reporters after he voted, a voter, Victoria Giambra. Oh God, an Italian woman? Stupid ass. Overheard idiot. his oh, comments fuck. about the state's high property taxes I mean, let me speak to that for a moment. It's been high since uh, Christine Todd Whitman. 
I know it's been high since Christie. Oh, Christie made it much higher? When when uh, Florio and, and uh, Tom Kane. Uh, Kane and Cody and all of these uh, the governors were in. Yeah. Every year, at the end of the year, disabled and elderly filled out a homestead rebate form. That's right. Homestead. And they got over nine hundred dollars from the uh, the. Uh, yes. What do you call it? The, the, Housing the, and urban development. Or? No, no homestead rebate. Oh, uh, Lifeline. The the. the no, oh, the homestead rebate. Yes, people. Property tax. Low income people, the poor, and people living on fixed incomes received several hundred dollars as a, as the homestead rebate right. once per year. From property tax. From property taxes, and Christie did and, away with it. Exactly. He slashed every imaginable social program in the state of New Jersey. And that's what made it laughable when Kim Guadano was going to lower property taxes. Uh, when they're the ones we on the rich got rid of it, you know, got rid of it for us. No, the middle class is always uh, uh, other Republicans carrying the tax burden. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Giambra overheard his comments about the state's high property tax. Their exchange quickly grew heated and culminated with Christie urging Giambra to run for public office. Giambra walking away and the governor telling her sarcastically that serving folks like you really is a unique joy. Sarcasm. Giambra had approached Christie in the parking lot of Brookside Engine Company, where they both vote, referring to himself as yesterday's news. Christie said he voted for his Lieutenant Governor, Kim Guadano. Christie, who is preparing to leave office with historically low approval rating. You'll probably get a show on Fox News. Mentioned duplicate services in the two Menhams and said major cities like Patterson and Trenton should follow a policing model established in Camden, which disbanded its police department in 2013. Yeah, Patterson cut his police force. Patterson, no. <laughs> and replaced it with a new county force with more than 400 officers. Oh, so they want to they they want to make it like like down south. They want to make it the, the they want the county cops to or police like, or like Hackensack. Po Bergen County Police or county. Well, they They're not Hackensack police. No, no, they can go anywhere in the county and make an arrest and and and, and investigate anything. But but we have borough police. Yeah, right, exactly. In Bergen County also. Right. So what Republicans would like is for there, there just be county cops. County per county. He said, residents frequently complain about high taxes, but don't want to consolidate services, including police, with other municipalities. Giambra said her taxes have gone up 20% and asked Christie why he never merged the two Menhams in his eight years as governor. Oh, God. Christie said he couldn't because, as governor, he did not have the authority to do so. He told Giambra to run for office in Menham Township instead of being critical. When Giambra flapped her hand in a dismissive gesture, Christie said, No, I know it, because that's too hard. It's easier to sit here and complain. No, it's not hard, Giambra said before walking away. It's just that nobody cares because it's whose hands in the whose pocket. 
and I don't have the money like you do. Easier to sit here and complain, the governor shot back. But you know what? That's the joy of public service. It's serving folks like you. That really is such a unique joy. It really is. You're fabulous. He was mocking her. He was mocking her all the while. Well, you know, he didn't really give her an answer when she says, you know, I don't have money like you to get things accomplished or to, to, to I guess she was referring to running for, yeah. for office. Of course. You know, I mean, um, uh, hey, good riddance to bad rubbish. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, balloon boy. <laughs> um... Yeah, so, yeah, so we got some, we got time. There's old, then there's Big Bang old. Yikes, that's pretty old. Using one of the world's most powerful telescopes, scientists have announced the discovery of a distant galaxy that's about 12.8 billion years old. Oh, there are galaxies uh, much older and much larger than our Milky Way galaxy. Just like our sun is a mere dot next to other suns. It's only about one billion years younger than the Big Bang. Making it the second oldest celestial object discovered. This new object is very close to being one of the first galaxies ever to form, said astrophysicist Min Yun of the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Now wait until the new um, um, uh, satellite telescope is out there to replace the Hubble, I believe, in next year, 2018. It's, it's, it's has the capabilities put Hubble to shame. Co-author of a study published Monday in Nature Astronomy. There is only one other slightly older and more distant object like this that is known. The Big Bang happened about 13.7 billion years ago. And now we are seeing this galaxy from 2.8 billion years ago. So it was forming within the first billion years yeah. after the Big Bang. Oh yeah, well, they're, they're, they're so many light years away that it, it, it takes that much time for the light to reach our uh, observatories and our, and, and our telescopes. Uh, you know, uh, what they don't, what they fail to tell the news media, or what the news media fails to tell us, is that we are still in danger of uh. our poles flipping. Yeah. And then all hell will break loose. There's a lot of secrets they keep from us, like the, uh, the doomsday asteroid that barely missed the Earth. <laughs> Seeing an object within the first billion years is remarkable because the universe was too hot and too uniform to form anything for the first 400 million years. Yeah. So our best guess is that the first stars and galaxies and black holes all formed within the first half a billion to one billion yeah. years. Well, our universe was very uh, dense and gaseous uh, back then, compared to what it is now, it was a very thick clouds of gas, um, uh, um, um, uh, <clears throat> hydrogen and such, and uh, then the stars formed, and then there's something called dark matter, hey. which uh, plays a significant role in the uh, formation of the universe and the galaxies, and, and then I watched a documentary all about black holes. The fascinating. Well, if I'm not mistaken, black holes 
are old stars. Yeah, they super that collapse. They supernova and then they collapse and they form. So a at dead, the beginning of the universe, dwarf, why would we have old stars? They have. Uh, they they supernova when they get when they get old, they explode. You know, they overheat. They have a, a sort of a, melt, a nuclear meltdown of their own, mm -hmm. and they uh, expand. They explode and then they collapse into a. I guess they call it a dwarf white star, or um, well, when they collapse and, and condense into a dead star, that's when the, I believe that's when the black hole forms. And the black hole... Singularity. It's like, yes, it's like a vacuum. <clears throat> it just sucks in all matter that is around uh, it. Yeah. It, it's, like, it's, like a, it's like Homer Simpson at a buffet. It yeah. just keeps on sucking in particles and anything that's in its path with its uh, immense gra gravitational pull until there's nothing around it and then it starves. Hey, you know what else black holes do? Sometimes they eat so much they burp up, they expel all that they consumed. Ah. And, and then whatever they consume goes flying in back out to the universe. Gotta love science. Gotta, gotta love it. The galaxy Named G O nine eight three eight zero eight. Yeah, wasn't there a Plymouth Galaxy one time? I think so. I there's a Ford Galaxy right there. Oh, Ford Galaxy. I'm looking I'm sorry. at it right there. I'm yes. sorry, Ford Galaxy. All right. Was spotted with the powerful large millimeter telescope in Mexico. A high precision time machine that can see images of galaxies born billions of years ago. Yeah, earthbound telescopes work better in a desert uh, environment because of the lack of clouds, because of the dryness. The telescope, operated jointly by UMass and Mexico's National Institute of Astrophysics, optics, and electronics provides insight into the birth and evolution of the universe. Once it comes fully out in line in the next few months, Jung said its higher resolution and sensitivity mean we can find really, really faint things. They are essentially at the very edge of the universe. I would like, that's where exactly where I would like to send Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell <laughs> and all the Republicans uh, in, in, in the United States to the far outer edge <laughs> of the universe. <laughs> oh, With a one-way ticket to oblivion. <clears throat> uh, got... We got time for a short one. Former Representative Anthony Weiner. Oh man, gotta love him. Report, yeah. I'm reported sorry. to prison on Monday. Oh, he really did. He really did. Yeah, but I bet he spilled the beans on uh, on on the the others he was uh, working with. If you know what I mean. To begin a 21 month sentence for sexting with a 15 year old girl. Oh, oh, that they they arrest. A politician for, but not uh, not rigging primaries. Weiner is being held at the Federal Medical Center, Devons in Massachusetts. Medical Center. So if you're too horny, you're you have a uh, uh, you're a sex addict. Is that, that what they're calling correct. him? A sex that addict. Is that is correct. Okay. The facility in Ayer, about 40 miles west of Boston has over 1,000 inmates at the medical center inmates, and over 100 more at an adjacent minimum security satellite camp. Wiener was sentenced in September by a judge who said the crime resulted from a very strong convulsion. <laughs> at the time, a tearful Wiener said, he was undergoing therapy. A tearful wiener. 
and had been a very sick man for a very long time. A very sick man? Well, he's uh, he's pleading for, uh, for lenience, I guess. He's a uh, very sick. I wouldn't call, well, I wouldn't call that. A very sick, sick man would be like a serial killer. Oh, boy. Amid a sexting controversy involving women, the New York Democrat resigned his U.S. House seat in 2011. Yeah, meanwhile, Charlie Rangel got away with what he did. Only to have new allegations doom his 2013 run for mayor. It's because he wasn't Caucasian, that's why. Last year, a criminal probe into his sexting with a high school student intruded into Democrat Hillary Clinton's bid for the White House. Then, FBI Director James Comey announced in late October 2016 that he was reopening the probe of Clinton's use of a private computer after emails between Clinton and Wiener's wife, Uma Abedin, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. formerly Clinton's closest aide, were found on Wiener's computer. Two days before Election Day, the FBI declared there was nothing new in the email. <laughs> yeah, call me was a wimp. Abedin and Wiener are in divorce proceedings. Yeah, including the um, that the one woman hired by Barack Obama that, that had to replace uh, was that the black woman, um, the one that had the private uh, powwow with Bill Clinton on the plane. Oh, the uh, yeah, yeah, the the, the uh, Attorney General. Yeah, the Attorney General, right. right. Yeah, she, she, she's another one that, 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 that wimped out, that uh, capitulated on any investigation. Okay, we got to uh, break. We have to break. We have to break. Well, okay. but we'll be back in a flash, though. And that's a threat. <laughs> okay. We'll be back in a freaking flash, brother. Uh, uh, guarantee. Okay, let us continue before a lunch. We're doing quite well here. On a, yeah, boy. Uh, in a timely fashion. Yeah, I like, boy. I like using that term, timely fashion. Timely fashion. Oh, timely fashion. Well, timely fashion. Oh, I oh, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> In timely fashion here. Timely fashion already. The guy Th cuts me off and I'm at timely fashion. Timely fashion. fashion. Let's go. What's going on here? Chop, uh, chop. Before lunch. We got 10 minutes before lunch. Okay. Timely fashion. So shall I continue? Yes. Did Martin Luther clear the path for Donald Trump? Martin Luther uh, of the uh, that went against the Roman Catholic Church or Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Roman Catholic Church. Uh. Luther can't catch a break. Even in a week before the 500th anniversary of his posting of his 95 theses on a church door, according to the writer, not only is Luther responsible for all, for spawning the cacophony of biblical interpretations that beset Western Christianity and the decline of religion against the advance of science and the process of secularization itself, he is even responsible for President Trump. <laughs> oh gosh, that's too funny. How tempting to imagine that if Luther had never existed, old school Christendom might still hold sway in the West. 
but this is a fantasy. Built on historical reductionism. Excuse me, some asshole truck driver is backing up outside. So you hear the beeping. Maybe a delivery for me. Maybe. Fuck that. We're doing a show. No, it's a tractor trailer. It's not supposed to be in here. I could see it. It's a big oh, rig. Oh, I see it. A big tra tractor. Scofflaw, man. I wish I was a freaking county Whoa, cop. Whoa, that's a big sucker. I wish I was a county cop. I swear to Ooh. God. You know how many freaking tickets I give out? But this is a fantasy built on historical reductionism. There were other social, political, and economic forces at work even before Luther came on the scene, that were laying the foundation for those changes. Luther was just one voice that became iconic of the era. As a Lutheran who values Luther's contribution to Christianity and rejects such things as his anti-Semitism, I say Put him in proper historical context. Don't make one man responsible for things that many people bear responsibility for. The same goes for President Trump. Recently, a group called Protect Jersey Jobs has condemned wage mandates because they would raise prices, hurt seniors, and undermine local businesses. However, a recent study done by David Newmark, J. M. Ian Salas, and William Washer of the Cornell School of Industrial and Labor Relations concluded that raising the minimum wage generally has little negative effect. On the, on the positive side, workers are more productive and less likely to quit their jobs and businesses gain. The oh. minimum wage aided me as I put myself through college in the 1960s. The minimum wage is chump change. The minimum wage was lower than a dollar fifteen. <laughs> Even today's minimum wage, a couple making today's minimum wage cannot make ends meet. Uh, $1.15 in 1964, $1.25 in 1965. Wow, don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> then again, U.S. postage stamps cost five cents. I know, yeah, I know. Somebody threw that up to my face. Oh, it's relative. It's relative. The cost of living was so low back then. Yeah, uh, gas was between 19 and 25 cents a gallon. Well, and guess what? The, the top 2% uh, were not on a tax vacation back then. Well, true. And a new Ford cost $2,300. And not only that, my grandfather used to be able to drive up to the Mawa, New Jersey Ford assembly plant and purchase a new Ford right from Ford itself without going through Dealer. some bullshit, lying, blood-sucking, parasitic, middleman, new car dealer with the most annoying commercials uh, next to Jared and next to fine jewelry, uh, you know, the most annoying, com obnoxious commercials of all. Rutgers charged $1,300 tuition for a year. Yeah. Today, stamps are 49 cents. Gas, $2.45 a gallon. And a new Ford cost about $23,000. Rutgers charges about 13000 for tuition. These figures reflect the general pattern showing that prices have risen about 10 times between 64 and 2017. As such, the minimum wage 
should be between $11.50 and $12.50 an hour. Fuck you. Should be $15 an hour. No, not a penny less. Not the 8.38 going to 8.44 that New Jersey requires. Let me guess. This is uh, a, a New Jersey uh, politician or right-wing academic uh, individual. It's an individual. That's all. Yeah, a right-wing piece of shit. This difference is the amount of money students and part-time workers lose as they try to pay their bills. I've got an itch in the middle of my forehead, buddy. 11 to $12 an hour. That's, the yeah. difference is the loss of the economy as people have less to spend. This difference is a less vibrant economy for everyone. It is time to bring the minimum wage at least up to comparable standards. Well, twelve dollars an hour is not a living wage yet. Uh, unless the cost of living decides to go down, which I doubt. Well, you know, it never goes down. No. Well, what we need is we need democratic socialism that Northern Europe has. That's what we need. And and what I for, what I forgot to say during the monologue <coughs> was that. I, list, I also, aside from the Nancy Pelosi interview on CNN, uh, Anderson Cooper also interviewed Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders, uh -huh. and Senator Bernie Sanders still wants to rebuild the Democratic Party as opposed to forming a new um, Democratic Socialist uh, People's Third Party. Uh-huh. He's still obsessed with saving and reforming the Democratic Party and keeping this the two-party system and equipped because he says if he runs in 2020, he will he will run again as a Democrat and not as an independent. Big mistake, Bernie. If you think the DNC will become this honest progressive party of integrity. <laughs> the writer sees fit to blame liberal values including the increasing tolerance toward homosexuality and promiscuity. Here we go. He's a zealot uh, evangelical. For the sexual harassment of female entertainment personalities. Well, they want to blame... Uh, they want to blame uh, who they want to blame. They, cher they cherry pick from the Old Testament. By Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. The writer does not seem to realize that the victimization of women in this way is probably more a product of conservative thinking. There's a pattern with conservatives. Many conservative men with their macho mentality. When you hear that sound, all right, continue. With their macho mentality, are conditioned to think of women as inferior to men. Well, like like radical, uh, not radical, extremist uh, Islam. The, the women are second, perhaps even third, to the family pet. Yeah, the camel's probably more important. The camel's more, uh, more important than the wife. Yeah, there you go. And as sexual objects. Yes, that's true. That is a pattern. We'll, we'll look at Fox News. Put all the executives at, at Fox News. In their minds, homosexuality, consensual sex between two consenting adults is worse than harassment. And in the words of one conservative years ago, worse than rape. <laughs> Let us also not forget that many conservatives, including authority figures in the Catholic Church, have been accused of sexually molesting young boys. Uh, homosexual pedophilia. Yes, that is true. Most gay men I know have respect for women look upon them as equals and certainly do not desire sexual relations with young boys. Though I don't believe in promiscuity, I believe in the rights and privacy 
of others in this regard. Look how, look how long women had to wait to, and they're still fighting for equal rights. Look how long uh, blacks had to wait before they received uh, civil rights in the early 1960s. You know, I mean, they, 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 they were still the brunt of despicable, horrible racism even after the Civil War. Um, so, uh, you know, it continues. Uh, the battle continues, the struggle continues, and the enemy continues to be the same. Yeah. The conservative right-wing zealot, um, Republican, or the Dixiecrat turned Republican. We're going to break for lunch now. You're yeah. going to you're going to see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn, followed by promo. Okay? And we'll be back for the balance of this week's progressive discussions. And we have an interesting one on on online. Ready to roll. Oh, you mean not on not online as the computer, you mean no, the, on it, this line. Right, right, right. I heard this gentleman uh pissed some people off recently. Well, this uh, CEO of Papa John's. Well, you know, he did that the thing with his uh, uh, workers. Oh. Instead oh yeah. Money, you know? Oh yeah. No, no, he's he's a bastard. Uh Sh what's his name? Scheichter? Schachter? Schichter? Uh, All right, let's go to lunch. I hate his guts. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press 
like newsletter censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back from lunch. Hey, we're back. Progressive discussions. We're back from lunch for the balance of our show. And we're, we're on our second Yinling Porter, America's oldest brewery, 1829 Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Made from a malted barley. It is a black uh, cerveza, a black beer, like stout, a a a uh, a, a sort of a domestic uh, a form of Guinness stout, except stout is roasted barley, and porter is malted barley. But I would say malted gives more value to a food because malted, I believe, means sprouted grains actual definition of malt. Alright, continue. Christianity and pro wrestling have this much in common. Tell me. Both are contests between good and evil. Yeah, you have the heel and you have the baby face. The heel, the, which is the bad guy, versus the baby face. In Christianity, it's angel versus devil. Well, demons have ranks, just like uh, good angels do. You know, they're, they're, the demons, and you know, hear the term devil is actually higher than a demon. In the WWE, it's babyface versus heel. Well, because I, I know the industry. That's why I knew it. And back in the 1980s and 90s, one of the great heels was the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase. Everyone has a price for the Million Dollar Man. He was always a man. That, that was his slogan. Actually, that slogan is it's kind of accurate. You know. He was always a bad guy, says Peter Ferrero film director who lives in Lyndhurst. Uh, sir, I remember Ted DiBiase when he first started. He was in the uh, NWA Georgia Championship Wrestling, Florida Championship Wrestling when he was in the independent, I mean uh, the territories. He was a, a baby face. Uh -huh. He started out as a baby face. He was a heel when he came to the Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Then he became the Million Dollar Man. Ted DiBiase with his sidekick Virgil. Then he became a heel. Uh, uh, Roddy, Roddy Piper was a heel practically his whole life because he was that good at it. He fought Hulk Hogan. He fought Macho Man. He fought Jake the Snake and Brutus Beefcake. He fought them all. Uh, he had his, uh, Iron Mike DiBiase was his father, I think. Mike DiBiase. He's a second generation uh, pro wrestler. DiBiase's journey from pro wrestling villain to Christian evangelist. Oh, I saw I saw Sting and Lex Luger on a Christian. Uh, uh, a, a born again evangelical type of Christian uh, cable station. And one of them was the host of the show. With his own Heart of David ministry. Oh, he's a minister. Oh, he, he does sermons. Is really? chronicled in Ferrero's new documentary film, The Price of Fame. 
That's a good title. The Price of Fame. You don't have much privacy, really, do you? He's turned into my hero, Ferrero says. He's a kind, compassionate person. He still works really hard and carries himself with character and integrity. He was, he was very uh, well known for his huge smile and that laugh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Everyone has a price for the million dollar man. The movie will be shown 7 p.m. Tuesday in 650 movie theaters nationwide. Which movie is this? Including several in New North Jersey. The Price of Fame. Oh. Oh, he's a, he directed it, or produced it rather. No, Sidney he's Piazza? starring in it. Oh, he's starring in the Price of Fame. Yeah. Ferrero is making the movie. Oh. As a fathom event, these are the same people who bring opera broadcasts, old movies, sports events to your local multiplex. This is a movie that tells you you can change your life no matter what situation you are in. Oh, Shawn actually, Michaels. It's actually true. He's another uh, Christian. Mick Foley. Yeah, wow, really? They're, they're in it? Rowdy Roddy Piper. God rest his soul. Terry Funk. Mm -hmm. Jake the Snake. Robert. Jake the Snake Robert. Yeah, he turned Christian. He he was in bad shape. Lex Luger. Another guy who was really hit rock bottom too. Axar Jim Duggan. Glen Falls, New York. His father was the sh uh, sheriff of Glen Falls, New York. Right, and, in, right next to Lake George, New York. And Harley Race oh, are yeah. among the Golden Age wrestlers who appear with the, the Aussie in the 90-minute documentary. Now, in those days, when you had the territories, they used to drive to their events, and they used to buddy up and carpool for those you know, that uh, got along with each other. The documentary was made over seven years for about seventy thousand oh. dollars. Oh, about your film. Now, Ted DiBiase, uh, he stars. He's the primary star in this movie. Okay. Another key figure in the film is the wrestler's son, Ted DiBiase Jr. Uh, who yes. followed his father's footsteps into the ring. As a matter of fact, it was the younger DBRC who landed the Fathom deal. He knew someone who knew someone. The movie is seen through his eyes. He's learning more about all these stories he heard about his father. As a kid growing up in Paramus, Ferraro loved pro wrestling. And one of his favorites was DiBiase, who cut a flamboyant figure in those glory days when Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage, and other outsized personalities ruled the ring. Most wrestlers, at least back then, played a character. A military man, Sergeant Slaughter. A redneck, Haystacks Calhoun. Yeah. A Middle Eastern terrorist, the Iron Sheik. Oh, the Iron Sheik. I worked with him briefly. The Iron Sheik. DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Born uh, uh, the the Miami-born adopted son of wrestler Iron Mike DiBiase. Yeah. 
There you go. Oh, here's the doctor. Chose the character of a strutting millionaire. Or rather, Vince McMahon. The founder of World Wrestling Federation, later called the WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment, chose it for him. Uh, yeah, they pick um, kind of um, intrusive, uh, egomaniacal, but they, uh, the WWE tends to pick everything for you now. Your gimmick, what you, what you say in the promo, um, what your name is to be, what, your, what, what, what entry music you will use. You have no say in anything. Cool. Uh, during the territories, like Jesse Ventura said, you were responsible for developing your character. You were responsible for your promos, there which you was go. very good. Because there, there go. was the, the promos back in the day were extremely entertaining. <clears throat> they were not lame at all. Especially the AWA, Vern Gagne, you know. I mean, all of them, all the territory promos were... You you were just glued to the TV set. I mean, yeah. they were really freaking funny. And Jesse's one of them. They did awesome, awesomely entertaining promos. My wife and I have lived in a quiet neighborhood for 22 years. Well, it's not so quiet anymore. Four months ago. Uh oh. Here we go. New neighbors moved in. Uh-oh. We endured three months of noisy renovations, construction, tree removals, before they moved in. Sounds like this Italian guy off the boat next to me. Something's always going on over there. Construction, this, that, and the other thing, landscaping. Over the last month, their two dogs have been left outside barking at 6 a.m. That's not good. And then barking for 90 minutes <laughs> yeah. at 6 p.m. Oh, and finally from 11.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. Hey, let me guess. Nobody goes outside to bring the dogs in the house. This. Because the dogs want to come in. Was the final straw. Well... I texted them three times. You can report that, anything, any noise making before 8 a.m. You know, landscapers cannot start here until 8 a.m., by the way. I told them this was unacceptable and finally that I would be calling the police. Yeah, it can be reported. I didn't call. No, he was giving them the benefit of the doubt uh, out of respect to see if they would, you know, he was trying to disfuse the situation before calling City Hall. They texted back the next day that they were away and that they would discuss the situation. Why were the dogs uh, abandoned? Uh, in other words, there was no one home and the dogs were left outside? That's what it looks like. There could be some charge, a, a, ASPCA uh, charges here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They came back and said that their daughter was home and, and that their dogs were in the house the whole time. Lie. They said it wasn't their dogs barking. Well, then, then, in other words, then the dogs were ventriloquists because the dog's mouth were, o were opening and closing <laughs> and the sound was going to another house. <laughs> it uh, would have been very easy for your neighbors. They make good Republican politicians, this, these neighbors. To own up to this and apologize. And a sincere apology on their part might have inspired you to feel more tolerant. See what happens when you're too nice and you bend over backwards? You and get it up the ass. You get it up the ass and yeah. you end up uh, screwing up your back at the same time. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Look up the noise statute in your area. Uh, great idea. There will likely be a special mention of barking dogs. 
this is a very common noise complaint. Uh, yeah, dogs that won't shut the hell up. Just like the Steve the Cat before, who happens to be sleeping, thank God. <sighs> there will likely be, uh, oh, by, wait, wait. Uh, you might be instructed to call the non-emergency number of the police department. Yes, they, they would handle the, uh, situations like this, non-emergency, non correct. Or the Animal Control or Humane Society. Uh, Keep a dog diary. There might be county statutes, too. Make careful notes of the times and duration of the dog's barking. And a nice, juicy smartphone video, which will state, I, I'm assuming, the date and time that the video was taken. If necessary, record audio or video. Oh, James P. Madonna, you're, Especially way, you're way ahead. of the late night mark. Uh, document everything. And that's why I love technology so much. Because if you gotta, if you have a good phone like an like an iPhone that takes high megapixel video, and it, and it shows you the date and time the mm -hmm. video was taken, you got them over a barrel. <coughs> I am pregnant <coughs> because of this. My father-in-law has started to dote on me. Especially with food. He says cooking is his passion. But he's a horrible cook. Oh, tell him your food sucks. Every time he shows up, he, sends, he brings something he spent hours making, and I feel obligated to eat. No, not if it sucks. My husband stepped in briefly when his father kept Making me spinach quiche. My, why don't these in-laws mind their own damn business? After one slice, I got sick. My F-I-L... Not a very macho food, is it quiche? Or is it quiche? <laughs> kept bringing me more quiche over until my husband told him it was one of my trigger foods for a nausea. Cut the quiche, man. Cut the quiche. The thing is, all of his cooking triggers my nausea. Why doesn't he just... just stay home and eat his crappy food by himself? How can I get my father-in-law to back off? You tell him your food sucks. <laughs> it was... Honesty is the best therapy. It's like taking a big dump in the bathroom. It was bad enough eating his food before I was pregnant. But I can no longer stand it. It's a waste of time uh, and a waste of food. Is there a, uh, is there a mother-in-law in this picture or does she croak? So it's only him? I mean, isn't there like a mother-in-law that says... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 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 you know, you're, tell your husband to stop bringing his shit food. You know, man? You it's know? time for you to speak up for yourself. Tell your father-in-law you appreciate his trying to nurture you, but that in your present condition you cannot eat any of it because of the violent nausea it brings on. Oh, my God. Many women share your problem during pregnancy, by the way. When the baby arrives, tell him you will remain on a restricted diet as long as you are nursing. Surely you are aware that women have been known to nurse their little ones for years. Uh, why? Uh, the baby only, only needs colostrum, which is the first week it's born. Colostrum is really the... The, uh, the primary reason for breastfeeding. Once your child is ready to enter preschool, if your father-in-law is still trying to bring food over, 
tell him thank you, but please stop cooking for you, because your palate and his are just too different. Tell, yeah, tell him you're making my, my breast milk taste very horrible to the, to the child. <laughs> you're tainting my breast milk. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, supposedly any mammal can continue producing milk as long as the uh, as, as long as they they've given birth, and the and the breast and the nipple is stimulated. Yeah. From what I understand, so yeah. a, a human female can uh, produce milk indefinitely. I think. Yeah. Do flat-chested women produce the same amount of milk as a big-breasted woman? Depends. Depends. I mean. How much stimulation they get, and how much? Uh, well, I know there's a lot of fat cells in, in the yeah. breast. How much? Uh, the mammary, I mean. How much? Uh, you know, proper building blocks you you need to make milk. New York City, Trump's hometown. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, Just experienced its worst terror attack since 911, with eight people murdered. Oh gosh, yeah. In the near the near the new World Trade Center too. His first tweet was to blame Democrats. Well, Republicans uh, have a, a very uh, wicked, greedy agenda, so they always use everything to blame the opposition. Um, oh, the, these poor souls were tourists, most of them too. I would think he would have expressed his condolences to the families of those killed and injured. Yeah, instead of making it political, yeah. making it petty political. He did the same thing after the Las Vegas mass murders, the largest in U.S. history. There have been several memorial services to the people killed in Las Vegas. As far as I know, he did not attend any one of them. He does not talk or tweet about it anymore. It seems it's all a distant memory to him. Yeah. Looking back at the mass murders of Sandy Hook uh, and Oklahoma City, Presidents, Presidents Obama and Bush and Clinton showed deep feelings of empathy and sadness for the families of the victims. But not the uh, rich, spoiled, coddled uh, Emperor Trump. And personally reach out to them attending memorial services, embracing family members, and shedding tears with them. Trump seems to lack this emotion, which is disturbing since he is in a position to put U.S. troops in harm's way yeah. and protect Americans here at home. Rather, rather sociopathic behavior. He was politicized, tra tragic events, to his own advantage, and quickly forgotten them and moved on. We should be very concerned about a president who has little personal feelings about these tragedies. Yeah. Well, well when he did Celebrity Apprentice, uh, both uh, Donald Trump, Ivanka, and his sons, they all acted very robotic, very stoic in nature, unemotional, you know. John Kelly. Trump's chief of staff, in an interview with Fox News, said that lack of compromise started the Civil War. Compromise? Where? We mean the, the South, uh, the Southern uh, crackers that owned the plantations wanted slaves and the North said no? Is that what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah. Robert E. Lee... An honorable man, and tops it all off with, there were people of good faith on both sides. Oh yeah, both sides, sure. Kelly's attitudes and opinions are at one with white supremacists, Q. Klux Klan. I guess he never read the three-fifths Prince Compromise in the Constitution. Never heard about the Missouri Compromise or the Kansas-Nebraska Act compromise. Lincoln even offered to pay reparations to slaveholders and ship 
blacks out of the country. What? As for Lee, he would kidnap black, free, free blacks, and sell them into slavery. <laughs> As recently reported in the Atlantic, Lee would, after whipping his own slaves, insist their backs be bathed in brine. Oh, gee. Such behavior is something only a conservative would find honorable. So he wanted to recycle his slaves. They were free, but he wanted to kidnap them and sell them abroad as slaves. Oh, right. was sell them here. Yeah, but slavery was illegal, right, at the time. Uh, no, the this is the cause of the Civil War. John Kelly says it was lack of compromise. Yeah. It was because of slavery, the right. cause of the Civil War. Well, even, even though... Um, Many Southerners uh, claim those economic reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are all bullshit. You know, the the poor uh, Southerners didn't have the uh, the industry down south, and uh, the economy was horrible. Meanwhile, they had all the agriculture, right? Yeah, pretty much. Kelly's statements are so devoid of truth. They transcend the limits of mendacity and pass, instead, into the twilight zone. The He's whole. a perfect fit for Trump's White House. Which is in the twilight zone. Yeah. Oh, boy. Donald Trump Jr. Jared Kushner. Mike Flynn. Jeff Sessions, Carter Page, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, and George Papadopoulos. All these men either met with or dealt with the Russians. Okay, is this a new one? A new article? A new reading? Yeah. Put your knuckle right on that paragraph because we have to pause but we do have t we do have time to, to finish this up but put your you never do that I we always don't have to I only have two sentences to go I always I always say if you put your knuckle there do the hucklebuck do the hucklebuck Okay. Continue. Our intelligence agencies say that the Russians interfered with our 2016 presidential election. Either President Trump is so out of it that he didn't know what these men who surrounded him were up to, or he was in it, on it. If the president was aware of any Russian interference and allowed it to happen, can we call it treason? Well, uh, and another question is, will anyone in high power or wealth be held accountable ever? Would anyone in uh, in high power or wealth uh, uh, be brought to justice? <laughs> or is it's just is just is, is this just simply news? We don't know. No one has been brought to justice from the uh, 2016 uh, election year. Yeah. Or, or this year, we hear the word impeachment being used every yeah, now and around, then. Yeah. Every now and then, but I don't see. I don't. I don't see uh, uh, the, the the gears in motion. No. For any of this. No. 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 Yeah. So. Anyway. A huge 
mysterious hole has been spotted in sea ice near Antarctica. Yeah, there has been uh, many uh, mysterious things happening down there. <laughs> the hole, detected about a month ago, is roughly 30,000 square miles or the size of Maine. Holy shit. No pun intended. Holy shit. Size of Maine? It's the largest hole spotted in the Weddell Sea since the 1970s. Don't forget, An Antarctica is a continent. There's land under that ice. In the depths of winter, for more than a month, we've had this area of open water. This is the second year in a row that scientists have seen such a huge hole in Antarctica's sea ice, though this one is bigger than the one last year. The phenomenon is called Polynia, which is an area of persistent open water where one would expect to find solid sea ice. The hole was detected using a robotic float that's capable of operating underneath sea ice in September. One of these floats surfaced inside the Polyne, uh, providing unique data on its existence. Moore worked with members of the Southern Ocean Carbon and Climate Observations and Modeling Project to investigate Polyne as and their climate impacts. It is just remarkable that this Polynesia went away for 40 years and then came back. Without the insulating effect of sea ice cover, a Polynesia allows the atmosphere and ocean to exchange heat momentum and moisture, leading to significant effects on the climate. The research has not yet appeared in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, as the satellite images were just taken in September. Scientists are not sure what this polynium will be for Antarctic's oceans and climate and whether it is related to climate change, according to National Geographic. Well, there's all sorts of documentaries on Antarctica. Some say pyramids have appeared. Some, some say that uh, um, uh, constant uh, extraterrestrial UFO sightings take place where the uh, UFOs enter a subterranean uh, uh, hole. You know they go they go into, the, into this giant hole. Um, you know, and uh, I was watching the Science Channel last night, and they were describing in fine detail this brand new class of nuclear submarine that will revolutionize. Uh, not only submarines, but all naval vessels. Why on earth would they provide this deep, this amount of detail to the public on the Science Channel? Aren't they afraid of uh, adversaries uh, seeing this? I mean, they really went through this submarine with a fine-tooth comb. You don't yeah. reveal. I mean, this is classified information, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you could you 
can talk a little bit about it, but not what they did. Really stupid and foolish, really. But it is revolutionary. But then again, technology, science, uh, is improving at a rapid rate. Thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. This happens to be uh, part of the uh, Thanksgiving Day 2017 countdown. Uh, do not shop on Thanksgiving Day or Black Friday weekend. Ooh. Hit greedy, wicked uh, retail corporate America where it hurts the most and also punish them for forcing people to work on those on that day, especially Thanksgiving Day. Especially Thanksgiving Day. Instead of uh, having them spend all day with their families, with their loved ones. We'll see. Bye bye. You know, I know I know I said that I made that statement at the very end of the show. I should have really made the statement at the beginning of the show, but better late than never. All right, say so long to these so people. Long, people.